A relaxed brain is a fast brain. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's pretty real. We don't want a brain that's bombarded with a bunch of chaos, a bunch of like glutamatergic signals, a bunch of energy. That's not exactly what we're after. We think when our brain is working at its best, we're thinking clear. We're not thinking like, ah, I'm going crazy, right? Like if you were to imagine yourself sitting down in a chair and just calmly trying to relax, the last thing that you would want is your brain going like hyperactive. People get confused and sometimes think that that means that their brain has so much energy or they just need to do something and you need to utilize that energy. It's not that simple. You can't just have all this bound up energy in your brain and just simply corral it into one area. I wish it was that easy. It's not like energy in the body where if you have so much, you just go sprint a couple hundred yards and you're good. So how do we get our brain to work in the way that we want it to work? I think one of nature's best nootropics is actually magnesium. So we're gonna break down why this works and how you may want to implement it. Today's video is brought to us by 25% off Thrive Market. Okay, so no matter what kind of diet you're doing or if you grocery shop at all, I would definitely recommend pivoting and trying Thrive Market for your groceries for a little bit. Okay, you go online, you order your food, whatever it is that you need, you pick your groceries, you can sort by different diet type, and then it's so cool, because for me, I'm really busy. I don't have time to just think about going to the grocery store all the time, like with my kids in tow and my family and this and that. I wanna spend my time with my family. I don't wanna spend my time with my family like going to the grocery store running errands. So for me, being able to know that Thrive Market has good foods that I trust, that fit within my dietary guidelines, well, then it just gets delivered to my doorstep. It makes life super easy. So the link down below gets you 25% off of Thrive Market plus a free gift when you use that link. So check them out after this video. So magnesium is super important, okay? It's critical for a couple of things, okay? Optimal nerve transmission, but also it fights against what's called cytotoxicity. Okay, so remember when I was talking about the brain being super hyperactive? So magnesium does some interesting things. For one, it sits on what is called the N-methyl D-aspartate, so NMDA receptor. And it sits on that receptor and it acts as sort of a bouncer that keeps out what's called glutamate. Now, a little bit of glutamate in the brain is fine, but magnesium regulates how much gets through that doorway. So that NMDA is like a doorway into the brain cells. Okay, if that NMDA is open, that doorway is open, then excitatory transmissions can get in. That's called glutamatergic signals, okay? We don't necessarily want a lot of that. So if magnesium is present, it sits on that receptor and blocks it, kicks it out. But as soon as we are deficient in magnesium, boom, all of a sudden all these glutamatergic transmissions can come in and it creates a lot of energy and kind of chaos in the brain. Now, when you have this occurring, you have a high degree of oxidative stress because you have too much happening in the brain. So the neurons are going through their oxidative metabolism as they would, and that produces reactive oxygen species, which means now the brain and the body has to upregulate other things to neutralize that. It's extra energy that doesn't need to be used on that at that point in time. Now, it is very imperative that we are not bombarded with glutamate when it comes down to creating what is called long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation is creating new neural pathways and creating stronger signals, stronger synapses, stronger sig signals between neurons. So I've talked about this in other videos, but if you imagine like forming a habit, forming a new habit, it takes a long time for that habit to become habitual, right? So paving new like plasticity and new pathways in your brain. So think about it like this. If you were to run a bucket of water down a stream of limestone, it's not really gonna create a pathway, right? But if you had decades upon hundreds of years, thousands of years, millions of years of water running down that same limestone, you're gonna have a canyon that forms that allows every time a bucket of water comes, it goes down that canyon, right? Well, that's kind of how plasticity works with your brain in a lot of ways. We are trying to form those pathways and that's long-term potentiation at its best. Too much glutamate can actually damage that because glutamate, I want you to think of it like this. It's like chainsaws that are consistently cutting off the branches of new nerve growth, of new neuron growth. So every time that tries to grow, the chainsaw is there and cutting it, okay? Very, very important that we don't have those chainsaws coming in all the time. It's a different story for a different day, but this is where sodium comes into play too, because sodium actually charges 
the vacuum that kind of sucks up excess glutamate. So there's a way to evacuate that glutamate too, but it's not worth talking about in this video. So magnesium is playing that role in making it so that the glutamate is not coming in so much. Now there was a study that was published in the journal Medical Hypothesis, which was interesting because they found that restoring magnesium levels up to like their normal level, if you are deficient, could actually have antidepressive and anti-anxiety-like effects. Okay, now it's probably doing this through that NMDA pathway that we've talked about. But the other piece that people don't always think about is how magnesium plays a role in what's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And that is the link between the hypothalamus communicating with the pituitary gland, which therefore sends a signal to the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. What cortisol does is cortisol puts us in that fight or flight state, okay, to a certain degree. Some cortisol is good, too much is bad. But when we have a high degree of cortisol, that in turn affects our brain, that affects calcium, that affects magnesium, that affects all kinds of things that once again increase, you guessed it, glutamatergic transmission increasing the amount of chainsaws in the brain, cutting down the ability to grow and build those new pathways and build those strong long-term potentiations, that really important thing. So magnesium plays a role in kind of regulating that. Now magnesium systemically is obviously important. Okay, we talk about it for muscle cramps, we talk about it for being able to just relax our body, relax our muscles, because we have in our body what is called RBC magnesium, magnesium that's actually stored in the red blood cell versus magnesium that's stored elsewhere versus serum magnesium. And when you take traditional magnesium, you are doing yourself a good thing, absolutely, but there's no guarantee it's getting into the brain. So the type of magnesium you typically wanna focus on is what's called magnesium threonate. So T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, threonate, and that can actually cross through the blood-brain barrier and may have a better chance, may have a better chance, in the specific category of binding to that NMDA receptor having that effect. So when you have less glutamatergic transmission and just overall just craziness in your brain, it makes it easier for you to have more myelination. So building new neural pathways. Again, myelination is like the freeway that nerve signals transmit down. Okay, so if we have more myelination, it's like a wider freeway and the nerve signal can go faster. So in an inhibitory way, magnesium stops the bad things from affecting our brain, allowing our brain to potentially live up to more genetic potential, if you wanna call it that, in sort of a colloquial kind of way. So if I had to pick one supplement for my brain forever, it would be magnesium, because it's hard to get from our food these days without having an overage of calories. It's hard to get from our vegetables because our soil is depleted, and it's something that you feel fast. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.